I know I was a little bit hard in my last chapter review, but honestly at this point in the story, I just expect more from it. This chapter did a good job of redeeming itself. One Piece, Chapter 495, Guyon Cannon. Well, thank heavens that's over. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation, and the wrongly accused <laughs> of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, and I'm here to bring you another review on the awesome and action-filled and sometimes silly head-scratching fucking tale that is One Piece. Now, uh, as I was very vocal about my last chapter review, it was not my favorite in One Piece, and mainly due to the big reveal of this enemy, Iron Mask Duval, being none other than some tall idiot that was a, a gang, I don't know, gangbanger type guy, or had his little gang and stuff like that, is now being hunted by the world government simply because he looks like the half ass wanted poster that was drawn of Sanji, so... That is uh, is how the events of the last chapter wound up leaving off. Of course, Sanji wound up coming and just nailing him and basically saying, Dude, screw you. It, it, Sanji had the same attitude I have. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. I don't feel sorry for you, you know. So anyway, uh, the chapter winds up picking up, and this chapter was done very well. A lot of action in it again, and I, I thought there were some really good parts in it. It starts out with Sanji basically just going to the, you know what, dude, it's not, I don't give a fuck. It's not my deal. Like, like I wanted this poster to turn out like this, or you an idiot. And, uh, and this guy is, he's an idiot, he's a crying, whining baby. And the thing about it, too, is that, again, not much time has passed since this all happened and, this, and the wanted poster for Sanji was actually released. So it isn't like this guy's talking about how he ruined his life and everything else. Dude, first of all, this guy was some kind of criminal with a hideout that basically used to, like, terrorize and kidnap and whatever people. Anyway, now the motherfucker just has to wear a mask when he does it because he's an idiot. And... Even Sanji was saying, and, and this was what really got me, he's like, so if that's the case and you looked like that wanted poster, instead of, like, making your life's work about finding me, why didn't you just, like, grow a beard, cut your hair, do something to change the outlook of your face a little bit? It's real easy to do, you know? And, um, <laughs> I mean, Superman did it for years. Clark Kent? Superman. Clark Kent? Superman. And the only thing that changed was he went from wearing a, a suit to a, like, a tight, like, skin suit type thing. You know, like, almost like a, a wetsuit, his leotard, his spandex. Anyway, besides the point, though, um, I probably shouldn't have harped on the other chapter so negatively. I don't like being that complainer. I don't like being that negative person. And honestly, I, you know, I, I've, I've looked at some of the different things uh, in reviews and reviewers in the community, and many of them that do very well on, on certain videos... It's because they find shit to complain about. People are drawn towards, like, negativity and, like, negative news. People don't want to hear... It's just a fact. People don't want to hear about, like, you know, the person who saved the five children. People want to hear about, like, the shooting where these people were massacred or this car was run off the road and there was four fatalities. It's a weird human nature-like thing, but for some reason, most people are drawn to the negativity and the complaining. So it seems like a lot of times, if you go and you talk poorly about a chapter, regardless of what your personal opinion is, you'll wind up getting a lot more comments, a lot more views, a lot more shares, a lot more likes. Other people will see it. Other people like to graft onto that hatred. Because think about when you're in a room with a bunch of people, right? And somebody's like, brings up something about this particular time that they were at a store, Walmart, Target, right? Everybody else in the room starts racking their brains to think of their worst experience at a Walmart or a Target or whatever the subject matter is, right? And then, for the next several minutes, everybody continually tries to one-up each other about what happened to them at that particular place, you know? Misery loves company. So anyway, um, I don't want to be that person, and I certainly strive to not be that person, so for the most part, most of my reviews are very objective in the sense that I'll say, yeah, you know, I didn't particularly care for this, but I usually don't get it real negative and harp on things like I did in the last chapter. So I appreciate it if you give me a mulligan on that one and give me a pass. Uh, I'm trying to work through some things right now. <laughs> so, but the rest of this chapter goes, it's great. Again, a lot of action um, and, and things wind up working out very well. Sanji, then they go and they throw, uh, they, these flying fish riders come out of nowhere and wind up in their formation and, you know, grab him in an iron net and pull him underwater. They're going to try to drown him, right? And while this is all going on, then they go and they bring in another, some, some more flying fish riders come in and they've got this giant anchor that they're going to go and drop and hit the, the Thousand Sunny with, right? And then I love it because they're like, you know, Frankie and Usopp are trying to figure out what to do and Frankie's like, don't worry, just we're going to do, we're, we're going to do this move called Chicken Voyage, you know? And at first it, it's spelled Voyage and Voyage are pronounced, or are 
spelled the same way but pronounced differently based on uh, the the accentuation that you use uh, um, the that, that the pronunciation the um, the way the word is actually spoken. So anyway, I forget the exact term and terminology for it. But anyway, at first when I read, I was like chicken voyage. What the hell does that mean? And then I was like, oh no, it's like bon voyage, like goodbye. And it's like chicken voyage, like oh shit, we gotta back out of here. The point is, is that the uh, the the the, um, the sun on the front of the thousand sunny, the lion, as I like to call it, starts spinning and actually goes and pushes them backwards quickly. And everyone's like, I've never seen a sailboat back up. You know, <laughs> the anchor misses. And then he goes and he tells uh, he tells Usopp, Frankie tells Usopp to go and get into there, right? So Usopp climbs down there. He's like, "What the hell?" Opens up the mouth of it, at the mouth of the the head, the, the lion head, or the sunflower, whatever you want to call it. It kind of looks like a combination of both to me. And a huge cannon comes out of it, right? It's called the 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 Guyon cannon. Anyway, gets everything locked in there, and then fires this Guyon cannon and just takes out, like, wipes out the majority of the fish riders, right? And I'm like, oh fuck, this is great, right? And it's neat to see the Sunny in action, you know? And the whole time this is going on, Luffy... <laughs> Luffy and, like, Chopper just got these starry eyes over things. Like, kids with those big, wide eyes when they've seen a new toy or a new something, right? And it's so great because Luffy just sitting there, he's like, Oh, my God, that was so amazing, you know? And he just... it. I, absolutely wonderful, I think, the way it was done. So the whole time this is happening, Sanji's getting pulled farther and farther underwater. And uh, and we wind up getting... Uh, Hachi goes and says, Hey, listen, I'll go and, and get in there and save him. And they're like, No, what are you talking about? The top of the speed chain, is, uh, as far as the, the list of, of fastest swimmers and whatnot, uh, are the flying fish. They can stay underwater for several minutes, blah, blah, blah. They got their riders, got these oxygen tanks, all this bullshit, right? That's why you can't get to Sanji. So then they go, and towards the end of it, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, but guess what? Mermaids are actually at the top of the top list. It's Papagoo that says that, you know? And Cammy winds up diving her ass in and becoming a useful, uh, a useful, helpful uh, member of the crew over here, or at least temporary member, I guess you would say. Uh, a temporary kind of background character that's actually doing something useful instead of just standing there and being like, save me. So she goes down under, wind up saving Sanji, and does. She winds up saving him during the course of a few different panels and winds up getting him back up there. And Sanji, it's so funny because when he comes up there, they're like, oh my God, he's, he's sustained severe injuries. His nose is bleeding. And they're like, and then <laughs> it stops like, if that's how it's going to go, then you know what? That's how he can die. And they look at him and his eyes are like hearts and his nose is bleeding because clearly, you know, he was, he was getting himself a little, uh, he was getting himself a little Sanji, Sanji would there looking at Cammy saving him underwater, dreaming about whatever he dreams about. So anyway, <laughs> then Luffy's going to go and he's going to take out this guy's like, I'm just going to ride you down Duval's like, that's it. I'll just ride you down with Motoboro, you know, his huge matador bull bison thing right so he's charging luffy's like i got this right and he's like talking about these horns and what they did they busted a hole in the dam they saved him from the navy right and i'm just like whatever all i could think about is like oh so you're horny <laughs> anyway uh that's the way my sick mind goes so he goes and he charges at luffy luffy goes and actually just like it looks like he puts his hands up but he's gonna stop him and then all of a sudden the thing just sort of loses its will and desire or whatever and just kind of turns around like kind of throws Duval off and then just like lays down and I don't know if he takes a nap passed out we don't know exactly what happened everybody's like Luffy what did you do to him and Luffy's like I did nothing you know while this was all happening Chopper who can communicate with animals uh obviously he winds up saying something to the effect of well, don't don't worry about the horns or don't watch over the horns aren't a big deal or something like that so I don't know hopefully we'll find out soon what's going on but the chapter winds up ending off with Sanji getting up and just going, you know what, I'll take care of this dude. And he just goes and starts mopping the floor with him. And I mean just beating the living fuck out of him. He's like, you know what, somebody who looks like that poster doesn't deserve to be here around here. So Sanji starts rearranging his face, you know. And the immediate th th uh, thing that I thought about was when he fought the uh, the guy with the noodle freaking Kenpo or whatever, the ramen Kenpo, that, that silly fucking Mad Hatter dude uh, on the train between uh, Water 7 and Eni's Lobby how he actually like hit the guy uh, so much that he wound up rearranging his face and the guy looked like a normal dude but then he was all upset because he wasn't like this goofy buck tooth mad hatter character anyway that's what i that's what i got from it and the chapter winds up ending off with him of course just beating the living shit out of this dude and and it's great because i'm hoping there and he hits him with this parage shot anyway the point is is that i'm just hoping that uh that this is this part of the battle and whatnot's done and that we can move on to hopefully bigger and better things so my chapter question for you though uh, brothers and sisters is ultimately um what are your thoughts on the flying fish riders and just kind of their design and this whole duval character i know that some have commented already that you just don't worry about him he's a throwaway character others tell me nobody in one piece is a throwaway listen everybody's entitled to their own opinion i just want to know what your thoughts are 
uh, on these particular characters that have been introduced thus far in this arc in the comments down below. Uh, feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, nation. Thank you for watching. Remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and check out my other channels.